Hello, and on this episode of the Average Tabletop Gamers, we are looking at this Shadow Spear, the new one from Games Workshop. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Average Tabletop Gamers. I'm Ben. And I'm Sven. Uh, and on this episode we are looking at the brand new box from Games Workshop uh, for Warhammer 40,000, Shadow Spear. So yeah, just released uh, well yesterday for us, so it might be a couple of days ago for you watching at home, but pretty much, you know, we this is um, brand spanking new. Yep. So... <laughs> Shadow Spear. Shadow Spear. I mean, yeah. so obviously, yeah. This is this is what Games Workshop would have used to term as their core box, or it's kind of a starter box. Um, so I'm assuming that's what this is. It's kind of you know the yeah, it's the your first steps in 40k. If you yeah. if you are just getting in the hobby, or this would be yeah, this would be what they were uh, they, they would tout to you. Um, this or the Dark Imperium box, which was the eighth edition launch. Um, but this is the new one that carries on the the meta, as it were. This is the the the, the following on of the story. Yeah, I mean, it, I'll, I'll admit it's been a while since I last had one of these style boxes. Mm -hmm. I think it was possibly Assault on Black Reach was the last one of these that I kind of got, which was a while ago. That's, yeah, that's so a I'm intrigued ago, yeah. to see what's in these boxes from Workshop now. Okay, well, I mean, let's do that then. Yep. So. First things first, as you're going to get with with workshop, the uh, the, the cover artwork. Um, now we'll we you know we'll 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 find a nice copy of it and and put a decent picture of it up uh, somewhere for you to have a look at. Um, and then we have a lovely back of box as well that shows all of the goodies that you get in there. Um, now this has got 35 miniatures and three books. So already it, it seems quite good because I remember some of the older um, box sets. You probably get around the same thing, but you generally only get the just the rule book, and yeah. you would normally get something that would give you the um, the basics of what you need for to get playing. You know, so it might be like a crib sheet uh, with you know here are the the, the space marines, here are yeah. the orcs, etc. Um, so if are these full codex that you're going to get in here, or are they kind of a, well, like? I don't know till we have a look. Okay, well, should we, should we break this box open? <laughs> so, we already took the, the polystyrene off the top um, because it was easier. Yep, and let's face it, we're just going to make a lot of rattly, crinkly noises otherwise. Bubble wrap. It's the yep. first time I've ever seen them put bubble wrap in. Yeah, that's... And it's not a lot of it. No. But I think it's just a balancing thing because of the way that these sprues align. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's a it's a narrower box to some of the older 40k boxes. But yeah, so I mean, it, it's kind of because the the way the sprues, they're fairly chunky. Um, <laughs> so I guess it's to stop them from rattling around too much and breaking any models that may be in there. Yeah. Um, so the first thing that you'll get, as you can probably see there, is a sea of grey plastic. Sprues galore. Um, it looks like we've got marine sprues here. I mean, that's a chaos sprue if ever I saw one. Yeah. And character sprues down there at the end. So let's just start. Well, I'm gonna them out and having a look. So right, oh, I've got obviously. A, uh, oh, these are two marine characters. So yeah. it looks like a librarian kind of. Yeah, the affair. stealth librarian. And we have some kind of. I think that's a captain. Yeah, it looks Does like it not say on them now? Uh, on the sprue. I no, it it, did. well, it may do, but not on these ones. Um, no. But they've got a nice copyright symbol on them now, so that's nice. But these are the. So the those are the marine captains. Yeah, so, yeah, so these uh, are the. the characters. The multi part plastics, but they're not the multi pose plastics for the. Yeah. Um, for the characters, anyway. So. They're obviously the multi part, so you, you can get the really dynamic pose, but you can't repose them. Even the arm is kind of set at a certain, yeah. um, like fixed point to the, it, uh, you the know, body. There's always that, you know, if you are a smart one, then you can do a little bit of work on it. Maybe do a little bit of shaving in here and shaving there, uh, just get a slight alteration. But the uh, the way that these are kind of going now, now 
Now this looks like the Chaos bad guy. Um, I can't remember what he was called. It's written on the back here somewhere. If we flip it over, we're going to tip everything out. So we'll come yeah. back. Unless you want to, let's see what he's called. Uh, master of Possession. There we go. So he's a Master of Possession. So, and that sculpt is gorgeous. Um, yeah, all of these sculpts. I'm going to have a look at these ones. Yeah, like some of the, I mean, the, the Games Workshop models, especially the Chaos stuff, has always got so much detail in it, and it's, it's also well, like, themed. Mm. Um, so these, are these Black Legion, or like, kind of... Yeah, the Black Legion is the, uh, the, the, the base for them, um, as part of a, a brand new Chaos release that they're doing, um, with a, a whole heap of new Chaos minis. Um, That's a very nice backpack. Yeah, I know. Just the, just the detail of the, <laughs> as you'd imagine. Do you know, let's, shall we, shall we do the deed? Right. Yeah. There we go. So there we go. So we'll put it under um, close up. Now hopefully you can get uh, an idea of just how much work has gone into that backpack in terms of the uh, the sculpt and, and things like the, uh, the go ahead belt buckle and things like that. Just, yeah, just absolutely gorgeous. But as I say, with it being workshop, and you know, the, the, you're going to get your skulls, and you're going to get your flames and skulls, flames and skulls, and you've got your goat heads and things like that. The, the it's like a bit for so it's kind of everything you'd expect to see, but it's really well sculpted. Um, so yeah, so they're the character models that we've got there: the librarian, the lieutenant, or the captain, and then the it's the master of possession. Yeah. So now we're into the marine sprues themselves. Now it looks like you've got three of the same one, or two of the same one. Uh, yeah, two of the same. So these two are the same. Uh, and it looks like there's a, a, a collection of different types of marine. Now this is a new armor type. I think it's the Mark 10 Phobos armor. Um, and it's yeah, I really like it. Again, there's some lovely poses and like just that kneeling sniper guy with the cape. So again, we've seen those kind of models before. Yeah. But the way that this has been sculpted in uh, in several parts means that the detail that they've got on the actual the pose and the fact that they made the the pose more dynamic than. Yeah, I think you would like have seen a on a few head options as well, especially for the sniper. So you've got obviously there's two different heads there that look like they would fit. Um, yeah, there's some really nice little touches on those. And these are the Primaris Marines. Yeah. So they are the ones that are obviously slightly bigger than what I'm used to from the last time I yeah. built the Marine Army. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you've got these new flying auto cannon marines. Yeah, when I saw the pictures of those, I will admit, I think they look a little bit out of place. Um, but I'm guessing the, the work in the army, but yeah, they just look a little bit kind of, yeah. Um, you know, flying heavy weapons is something I never thought I'd see. Do you want to try and get one of those under the, the yeah, closer let's, bit? Yeah, let's, let's try that. So you can see there all the detail that we've got on the various different marines and things like that. I think these ones, even on the close-up, it's going to be hard to see the detail because there's so much di like all r all around the model because of the way they've sculpted. Yeah, them. yeah. There's there's bits everywhere. Um, you know, you've got the grenade pouches and and Terminator badges and and just yeah, just a whole whole load of new and interesting just little bits and bobs so what we've got there is that another marine spray yes it's in the marine spray so it looks like we've got more of the same we've got more sniper rifles we've got more uh yeah we've got another flying auto cannon dude um probably the rest of the squad we've got i mean there's a guy here who's got obviously looks oh yeah it's actually that's the part for that sniper he's the standing sniper yeah and he's got the cape drawn back over his shoulder which is nice um These are some really nice models. It's the kind of thing that I would like to get a sprue of these and use them to build some stuff for Kill Team because I'm 
Yeah. I'm probably not going to build another full marine army again, given the several I've got in the house. But <laughs> these are really, I mean, these are the kind of models that make me go, actually, yeah. you know, I could be tempted Especially to go. These, yeah, these, these lightweight armor, as opposed to the standard full Primaris. Um, as much as I like the Primaris look, um, I think it might, it, 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 it looks a little clunky at times. Where these guys with their um, uh, dude shorts. Yeah, they've got like the kind of. Uh, uh, now you've mentioned it, I noticed they've got like the kind of the half, like, yeah. Uh, gre uh, gre yeah, greaves, isn't it? Like the. It's kind of not the full flare leg that you get on the marina. Yeah. It's kind of halfway between a scout leg and a marine leg. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um. But yeah, there's some some lovely options on here to to detail the models. But as I say, they are kind of very much they're, yeah, they're they're kind of static, aren't single they? Single pose. But again, a little bit of I guess there's the the models are individual enough that you're not going to have what you used to get. So as I say, I mean I remember going back to one of the first 40k box sets I ever got. Yeah. Where you had. Ten marines, almost identical. You know, I the just ones. the push fit kind of yeah. holding no, a holding a bull gun across the chest. The air guitar boys. Whereas them, these every single model seems to be like an individual character mm. um, in a pose. So you you're probably not going to need to do that no. much sculpting unless you went out and bought several boxes of these just to yeah, you yeah. know get a bunch to start off with for an army. Um, but even then, you'll have two models that might be the same rather than. 20, 30 yeah. models. I mean, having the two identical sprues, like these two base identical sprues, but still having options, yeah. like being able to swap heads, being able to, you know, maybe uh, do a little bit of an arm swap or put a different helmet on one to another. You know, it's, it is, they are the same, but they have thought that through a little bit. Yeah, there's a bit, a bit of variation. So, now, now we get on to the bit that really I'm really excited by. Yeah, the chaos stuff. So do you want to go with that sprue first? Because this right. one's got the chunky boys on it. <laughs> That's a technical term there. Um, you can have that one for free workshop if you want. Uh, put it in your next codex. So what we've got here appears to be a squad of chaos space marines. And... Yeah, they are lovely. There's they are some, absolutely gorgeous. There's some classic. So there's some there's some detail even just that can see from here, that harks back to the classic mm. Black Legion models that they used to do. Um, All those years. Way ago. back in like the late nineties. Um, yeah. So there's one of the guys that we game with regularly. And he used to always do Black Legion stuff, and so he was obsessed with it. And just that auto cannon there, yeah, that just looks like one of the old Chaos Terminator auto cannons from yeah, the old yeah. Metal Terminators that used to buy for Space Hulk and things like that. Um, They're lovely, and I think you've also got some of the chunky boys on here as well. Um, so the Chaos Possessed, which I think is a lovely idea. That they've done these uh, finely done possessed space marines. Yeah. Um, and I, th I bet they're double hard. There is so, there's just outrageous levels of detail on these. Um, yeah, it's it's. Oh look at that! Tell you what, let's try and get yeah. the sprue as yeah. much as we can into the. So. There is so much on this sprue, and you just can't, you can't take all of it in. It's gonna, you know, sitting down, putting these together is when you're finally gonna get to see kind of how much work has gone into that. I'm just like, every time I glance across it, I'm just seeing something new and fabulous and a, 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 another little detail that I, I hadn't spotted before. There's, there's so much nice details. I mean, yeah. even like some of the the backpack details. So there was one where has it gone there? That there's that backpack there that's got like, the spinal column, yeah, or, like, the skull and spinal column built into it. And you've got ones there that have got like kind of gaping chaos moors on them. Um, 
even some of the bolters have got things like uh, eyes on them, you know, like the eye of Horus and, and stuff like that. There's just so much detail. And you've also got some of the, so the classic affectations that like you've obviously got there, like your classic, like, pincer <laughs> claw. Um, Big lobster hand. But I think over the, the, through the years, Workshop have kind of refined this, the style and mm. the sculpting on those kind of things so they don't look silly and out of place yeah. anymore like they, they would have done on years models ago, in yeah. like you know 10 15 years ago <clears throat> um even kind of you know the models were the like the bullhorn helmets and the mm. like there's a one where is he again it, it's once you see something it's so hard to go back and find <laughs> him again there's one of the helmets that's got like the single horn well there's the the classic kind of ram's horn helmet yeah and they don't look like comedy viking helmets anymore um, no, no, that's a really good point. They actually look, yeah, they like look, they look, they, they look, look organic. They look, yeah, they look, like they're supposed to be there, and yeah. it's not been. I'm it's trying to find together. a way to say it without kind of insulting the Games Workshop sculptors of the past, but it looks like you know, like it's meant to be there, not just yeah, someone yeah, not slapped on. Someone said to the seven-year-old son, "What do you think horns on a helmet should look like?" <laughs> But no, I designed a space sprue, Taddy. And that's a lovely sprue. And then we get the second chaos sprue. So this is the one that's got, as you say, the Gert Biggins on it. So I think this is, um, so this is called a Venom Crawler, which is, it looks like some kind of horrific spider creature thing with pincers and stuff. Um, and it's just horrible. But at the same time. I mean, it's a beautiful sculpt. Very nice. Wrong, but it just looks, oh, there's a chaos moor with a tongue sticking out of it. That's just gross. And I think you've also got obliterators on here. The um, uh, chaos dreadnought yeah. things. Um, and yeah, there's so, again, there's so much detail on these. Lovely stuff. Yeah, I think these are going to be, these are going to look nice when they're kind of all done up. Again, it, it's kind of hard to appreciate some of the detail when it's just flat on the sprue like this. You know, it's not built out and you don't yeah. see all the bits go together. But there's obviously, there's bits here which is clearly, is that one of the legs or is that just a base? I think it's a scenery piece for the base. Yeah, so it looks like, because I know it's on some of the other sprues as well, there were like little um, terrain pieces that are meant to flesh at the base, especially yeah. on the flying dudes, um, yeah. which is what I'm going to call them until someone corrects me and tells me what their correct Games Workshop name is. To me, they're going to be flying heavy weapon dudes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's so much thought has gone into the way that they've sliced these in the sculpt to get them to get like a real 3D dynamic yeah. model without. And what I, the, the, what I really like about the way that they're doing that now, and it's it's ever such a small thing, but it's something that if you do a lot of uh, minis like we do, it's clean up. After you take them off the sprue, the amount of clean up that you have to do, and with the way that these are now sliced and the way that you join them together, a lot of those sprue marks and sprue lines are hidden, are hidden in the joints. So the clean up takes less time, which means it's quicker to get them built which means they get on your paint table sooner um it's there yeah, there's so much thought that they're putting into them so thank you for that one yeah it's something the workshop have been really getting right over the last few years with the ways they've been doing the plastics i mean so all the the most recent workshop stuff i've been working on has been the shades by a stroke night yeah, yeah. bit and the way those models go together where a i mean these aren't push fit they're push fit but the way they go together and it, it kind of as you say the joins are almost where yeah. there's going to be a join yeah. there's going to be a join anyway like where yeah. a belt meets a body or something yeah. so do you want to try and get another close-up so we can show that off a bit <coughs> let's try that so again with these ones i think it's going to be hard to do justification to the the level of detail on the models even with the the close-up just because there's so much to look at it's hard to even do it here yeah. Like handling the sprue. There's yeah, there's there's just little marks and and knocks and there's little, little bits of damage and and 
and scrapes and scraps. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, they're beautiful sculpts. And again, I think they'll be lovely when they're put together because of the fact that the detail's there and the... Mm. It's, it's, so, it's easy to paint a model that's got the detail already built into the model. Um, yeah, it, uh, yeah, when you're not having to freehand or, or kind of over egg the, the, the pudding as it were, you and can the get fact a lot of work out of them. The detail's so sharp and crisp, like the lines are so sharp and crisp and the plastics these days really helps. Um, again, you'd get the bits in the old ones where just because of the way the moulding process mm. worked, the, the, the casts weren't crisp and so you'd always get that weird blurring it when you got to yeah. under the arms and things like that. Uh, okay, so the next oh. bit of plastic, a bag of bases. So we're not going to dwell on a bag of bases. <laughs> I've said it. <laughs> we'll move on. So what you are getting with these new Games Workshop boxes is this divider. The protector. And we got it in the in Blackstone Fortress, it Blood was in Dark Bowl, Imperium, yeah. in Blood Bowl, etc. And on one side, you're going to have this. And on the other side, you've got the cover art, which, I mean, it's beautiful. It's, a, it's almost a shame that that's there to protect, because you can see, obviously, this one's got a, a uh, some, some, some now, yeah. but it, that's because it's done its job in taking all the spiky <coughs> bits from here and stopping them from puncturing it in the book. Let's see if we can. So there you go. So there's the cover art that we were talking about before. So that's obviously, you know, if you if you look out and you get one that hasn't been punctured by some of the sprue, mm. that's a lovely bit of artwork. You can just either blue tack to your wall or frame up or... But the, 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 the nice thing I like about it, and, and it's what Games Workshop are doing there again, which is really, really clever, is when they're releasing these art bits of artwork before they're releasing something new, they've got... It, they're full of Easter eggs. They're full of yeah. teasers. You know, they've got 101 different things. You know, there are n other bits of artwork that are associated with this box launch and, and kind of the, the, the new launches that they're doing. Where if you're smart and, and look at things properly, you'll see the new models that they're releasing. It's, it's very clever. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's a hard. <clears throat> yeah, I was, I was going to try to see if that was actually made up of actual real like photography but it looks like it is just all the digital yeah. that they've used um we'll put that on top there on top of the, the other artwork so we've got a few i lied about the plastic <laughs> we've got a couple of large bases and we've got your see-through stems for flying dudes flying assault cannon dudes yeah um but then we got on the the literature the literature so oh ah oh, there's I'm even lying again, there's another big plastic base. I'm gonna take that out, let's get the plastic bit out of the way. So there's the large base, I'm guessing, for that... Venom crawler. Venom crawler. I nearly said web crawler thing there, but venom crawler. Might as well do that bit as well. Yep, and we also get a transfer sheet, if you can pick it up. So yeah, so we've got a sheet of decals. Um, I'm Ultras, not even... uh, yeah. Ultramarines, and, and Black Legion. One. Yeah. You don't get, I mean, the, the the Black Legion, you pretty much, it looks like you get two large symbols, the Chaos Undivided kind of eye yeah. um, for the Obliterators, and then you're going to get ten other ones. You, ten get a, Marines, yeah. you get a lot more for your your, yeah. your Space Marines, your Ultramarines. Uh, so, yes, what's nice about this is that you've got, it, it actually labels them, so you've got Chapter, you've got the Ultramarines, Symbols, you've got battle line, fire support, you've got campaign badges, librarius markings. So it actually tells you what the how to put them on. symbols Where to are. Put them on, yeah. Well, it, it tells you who, what they are, yeah, who, who, they're, who meant. they're meant for. Um, but that's always a nice little touch, giving you the decals. So here we have a sample chapter from obviously what's going to be a new book called Black Legion. You know, they write some really good books now. We might get Sven to do a read along. Unfortunately, it'll probably be against some kind of copyright thing for me to do that, but <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll read it and paraphrase line by line. <laughs> um, and then we get down into the actual nitty gritty literature, um, which is conveniently sealed. 
but I have prepared myself with a piece of cutlery. While you're doing that, so looking at this sample chapter from Black Legion, this is book two of the Black Legion series. Book two? So it's the, the follow-up to the Talon of Horus. Oh. So, and it looks like, yeah, so I'm assuming, again, I've not really caught up on the Black, Le uh, the Black Library books for a while, but it looks like, yeah, there's various other books in the, in the chaos path that this is kind of going alongside. Go over there. Yeah, it's always nice to have a little Please sample a chapter. Okay. So, what have we got here? So, first things first, we have the Shadow Spear book. Um, now, this, I assume... Oh, inside you'll find a history detailing the Battle of Nemengast and the conflict of Forge Infernus. A branching tree campaign that allows you to stage your own reconstruction of the fierce fighting that took place. Uh, all totally, you can use the rules provided to play out your own covert missions and unique stratagems. So this will be, yeah, so this is campaign specific rules. Um, and as you expect, it looks like the, um, all of the 40K books at the moment is the same kind of style with the, uh, the off-white printing or the off-white pages. And then lots and lots of lovely pictures and rules. So yeah, we've got all the scenarios in there. <coughs> yeah, that's nice. So yeah, so it looks like we've got... The back half of the book seems to be... I mean, it's only 24 pages, the book. But it looks like you've got a few different... Um, yeah, a few different battle. A few different battle scenarios um, with the relevant stratagems to go with them. You got quite a few there, really, over half the book. Um, but yeah, it's got some what you what you'd normally expect, kind of, you know, a lot of the fluff. the background fluff to to give you all the detail and history and lore behind this, which I know is a lot of the the reason why Games Workshop and the games are so successful is the the amount of like immersion you get yeah. from, and again, it's it's all this stuff as well. Yeah, I mean the fact that. You can read about your favourite characters in full novels and then you can play them out on the table. Yeah. Um, and and it's, you it's over 30 years of meta now as well. You know, the story that they've been writing has been going on for over 30 years. Yeah. I know it's over centuries within the game world. Um, but they've had 30 years of putting this story together. And, you know, I know we've talked about it quite often about how rich that heritage is. Um, a little codex for the Vanguard Space Marines. So we'll have a quick switch through that. Again, lots of lovely pictures. Uh, stuff about what the Vanguard Marines are, different to all the agents of terror. Uh, what they look like under different Yeah, it's always, it's always nice when you get the Again, it helps you painting. If you're not going to be just going off the straight Ultramarines um, kind of scheme that you normally get with your Games Workshop products, it is nice that they do often give you the, the chapter markings for various different chapters and you know what the paint schemes look like as a suggestion, as a guide. Yep. Um, and then data sheets um, for them. Uh, so you can just drop them straight into your... Um, into your into your army. Yeah, so we like that. And we have a similar one for Demonkin. Or Daemonkin. Um again, lovely pictures. Uh looks like some fluff. Um how traitor marines become traitor marines then you've got a nice again a nice bit of painting work uh, so you can pick them out and go right I want to do those uh, what's nice is with these books just on these like kind of colour spreads with all the models is just flicking through this you get an idea of what those sprues are going to look like and just looking at some of the sculpts like the guy there with the slung rifle using oh, the lovely. pistol 
And we now know that the flying heavy assault dudes are called suppressors. suppressors. So there's something I've learned today. <laughs> oh, the snipers are called eliminators as well, which is rather nice. I mean, it sounds like a 90s game show, doesn't it? You know, with those names. Time to face the eliminator. Yeah. Da -da -da -da. It's like done on ice skates, maybe. No, roller skates. Yeah, and you've got another one here with the, 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 the Chaos dudes as well. And um, yeah, see, it gives a real impression of, A, I mean, you can use that when you're painting as a bit of inspiration, um, but also you get an idea of this kind of poses that you're going to get and what that uh, Venom crawler looks like when it's built up, and it looks absolutely... It looks amazing. Nightmarish. And that's, yeah, that's horrific, isn't it? Yeah, if you're not, if you're not a spoilers person, don't, just don't bother. Yeah, so we like that. So two kind of, I guess these, yeah, these are going to be the ones that will go alongside your normal um, codexes, kind of, yeah. as you say, to build in. Then what I really like that they're doing, the rules. Yeah, so that's what that's something I was going to ask, because I thought that Shadow Spear book that we saw there yeah. was going to be the abridged rule book. No, there you go. That is it. That is the core rules. I mean, that's... That is, and A, it's nice that it's kind of in that little pull out, you know, easy to see yeah. um, format. And, it, and obviously it gets more complicated when you start adding in the individual units yep. and their effects and things like this. But the actual core rules of how the game works has been reduced down to eight sides of A5. Side of A5 paper, which I mean, that's, it's fairly phenomenal it's that they can do that these days, given how weighty some of the tomes of the rules yeah, have been yeah. in the past. I mean, which was it? Was it 4th edition? 5th edition? Where they had that book that basically weighed the same as the yeah. uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. The amount of times I had to take one of those off a shelf and wave it <laughs> in the eyes of a parent to say, I know it's a lot of words. Yeah, but you'll enjoy reading them. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean that's that's great that they can kind of boil the rules down into that crib sheet. Um, so you do. So I guess the question I was going to ask, based on that, was if I was to go out and buy this, yeah, could I play the game with what's in this box standalone or? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's the the question I was going to yeah. ask. So yeah. that's a good thing to note. Um, and then here we have the um, the building guide uh, so it's going to have all of your details for how to put them together uh, what bases to use here you've got your bits for you know what transfers your, yeah, go your water where. Slides. then you've got all of your how to put your minis together and if there are any slightly different bits you can put with them so any alternative builds which it appears there might be, like I say, the occasional like a head swap here, a head swap there. Oh no, so they've actually built them with. Yeah, so it looks like some of them have actually got two different head choices. Yeah. At different angles and stuff like this, just again give you a slight different, slightly different look. Uh, yeah, the head choices on the eliminators. Uh, the suppressors again looks like they've got different head choices and then into the chaos ones blah 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 and then the painting guide yeah the painting guides are nice it's, um, especially that it gives you obviously the games workshop paint codes that you need and I, I do like this system that games workshop are using where they have you know the base the layers and yeah. they, they kind of give you the, the and it's a, it's nice again for if you're not a, a master painter yeah um, you know it, it, it's nice you can just follow those basic schemas and you'll get the right kind of colours you may not get the polished detail that yeah. they're going to get but let's face it there's very few people that can get that kind of level of detail and I certainly can't and yeah and you combine this with things like their YouTube channel, Warhammer Community YouTube channel, 
um, and the painting guides that, that, that you get on there. Um, yeah, there's, there's, it's really easy to follow along, and the app as well, you know, the, the, the paint app yeah. is, is a really nice uh, bit of thing because it will show you, right, I want to do this kind of Mephiston red through to Wild Rider red, and it will have it on there, and it will show you what stages to do, etc. So, yeah, all in all, so that is what's on the box. Oh, and we'll show you the back of the box properly this time. So again, what you've got is uh, a really nice picture of all of the minis built and painted. A uh, little bit of fluff up here, and then a contents section down there, and then all of the don't chew these. So I guess mornings. brass tax is what's the box cost in terms of you know what what you're gonna what this what did you pay for this basically? It's 105 pounds. That's a bit more than the uh, more than they used to be. Than they used to be back in the days. So yeah. Oh, inflation! It's, no, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean it, it's one hundred and five quid. So, I mean, again, and you've I'm, got thirty-five minutes. I'm in the dark in terms of what these kind of things go for in terms of the one hundred and five pounds now for a workshop. I think I can't. I think this is the first one that's broken the hundred pound barrier. Um, and yeah, you know, it is one hundred and five quid from Games Workshop and you know 35 minis etc but there are resellers yeah. where you can get it a lot cheaper um, and in fact what we'll do is we'll put our affiliate link to yeah. uh, one of the resellers we work with down here so if you do like what we've done here and you want to order a copy go and see them and help us out yeah I mean actually looking at it 105 quid as I say thinking about how much things like kill team and things cost it's actually not that bad considering you know it's yeah I guess it's the, the what a game will cost you these days um, and the the everything you get with the support you get with it, the fact you're getting the codexes which you know in the past workshop would have given you um, that shadow spear book and then would have probably given you two mm. pamphlets and then you'd pay 10 quid each for those two books like a standalone yeah I mean even if you kind of you, you break it down by the, the, the minis cost but £105 you're paying what three quid a mini yeah I guess so now when if they release these as individual things the individual characters you're looking 15 to £25 each that Venom Crawler will be a £35 to £40 yep. pound bit of kit two obliterators again that'd be 35 to 40 pounds yeah so actually you're, so you're getting the when the you content. break it down that way it, it it's phenomenal value um and it is and it is it's it's what they do really well it's a pick it up take it home play the game yeah i mean i, I like the fact you can do that and i think as an entry point for the game this is probably a great starter for anybody that was that was just getting into 40k mm. or if you you're building your chaos and you're building your upmarines, as you say, like you split a box with this with if you've got two two mates yeah, who are two mates, you space marines and chaos players. You get fifty quid, which will get you two squads. Okay, so it's not quite two squads if you bought. Well, you wouldn't even need two squads now uh, if you just bought them individually. Yeah. But you know, fifty quid to get your brand new release minis, really exclusive. Like, different style of yeah. mini as well with a totally totally new style of, of game style to them all that new cool chaos gear it's yeah it's a nice way of getting into the hobby uh, always a nice way of just building on what you've already got yeah I mean I say just looking at some of the models I'd be interested I probably won't buy this myself just because yeah um, it, like 40k isn't a game that I'm playing a lot at the moment no, at all so. um, but however some of those models, I'd be very interested in getting my hands on some of those Primaris just for like things like Kill Team and things like that. Yeah, Even some yeah. of those Chaos models are yeah. so nice that they would be... Oh, a Chaos Kill Team. They, well, they'd yeah. just be nice to build and paint as, as modelling yeah, yeah, pieces. Just, just, just for the um, and, and, and kind of this is the first step in a, in a new uh, release series for, for Workshop, Games Workshop. Of chaos stuff. Yeah, so they've got obviously the new Abaddon. It's coming the, along. The new Abaddon. The new I can't even remember what it's called. 
bloke that rides around on a massive yeah. chaos crab of destruction. Um, they've announced a brand new box of uh, Chaos Space Marines as well for, for pre-order next week. So it looks like they're actually showing the chaos some some serious stuff. Yeah. You know, they did Death Guard uh, when they did the eighth edition release, um, and they've done an awful lot of really nice stuff for the for Death Guard, especially over the last couple of years. Um, but it's really nice to kind of see them go back to you know go back to the roots, the Black yeah. Legion, the the the, the spiky. What did they say? Having a, like, have I've got a long history of playing against the Black Legion. Um, <laughs> kind of going back to like second and third ed, really, kind of, and then yeah. forward from there. So it's I'll, it's so nice to see the models as they as have evolved to where they are now. I say like, there's no denying that they that they are related to the the yeah. Black Legion models that were that were available way All back when ago, yeah, yeah. like the first kind of boxes they started doing of the chaos space marine where yeah. they started bundling you know the chaos spiky bit sprues i remember them yeah uh with the vehicles and things like that and it's kind of getting to the next step of that and i said it's that that kind of again draws me back to this as an old school games workshop yeah. fan um but yeah it, it's a lovely box set and i say because i've not really kept on top of the the games workshop stuff since as i say the last thing i bought was black reach i think it, was even, it might it might have been black reach was that the one with the dark angels uh, i can't remember i think so um but yeah so it's there was one of the boxes set many years ago the, the last one i bought so to see where it's at now and what you get in the box yeah um yeah. Is, is nice and as i say i think in terms of the just the the quality of the models, as you say, there's probably more than the box contents worth there. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So it's definitely, I think, looking at, I know, like, when you first said 105 quid and then he fell off my chair, <laughs> I then obviously brought myself back into, yeah, yeah. you know, Coming where back. we actually are. I think it was because of the fact that the last time I was dealing with these boxes, they were 50 yeah, or yeah. 75 quid. Yeah. Um, and, and we, you know, a lot of the other stuff that we play isn't in this price range. Yeah, exactly. But then, you know, things as we've looked, found recently, things like Black Fortress, um, the uh, Kill Team, uh, Spaceship Kill Team thingy, whatever it was called. Blackstone Fortress. No, that uh, was... Rogue Trader. Rogue Trader, that's it. Um, you know, they, again, you're not getting as much, but, but you know, Blackstone Fortress wasn't a cheap box. Yeah. Um, Rogue Trader wasn't a cheap box, you know, the, the, the hobby prices are increasing. We're seeing it across all of the games that we play, um, you know, and, and and you kind of have to accept that, that that's the way that the world is going. Things are getting more expensive, but as a result, you're also getting much better quality <laughs> than you ever were. Yeah, so I guess the question for you as the owner of this is what's your favourite bit now that we've unboxed it? Which is going to be the bit you're going to go for first? Probably the Chaos Marines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I would. I, <laughs> no, I'll no, have to no. say I would as well. I'd build a couple of those eliminators just again. Yeah, yeah. Mainly uh, because yeah. I want to try and do that camo scheme that they've got on the uh, <laughs> the cloaks. But I'd probably, you know, build yeah, a couple no, of those I'd, guys. But yeah. yeah, the Chaos stuff would be a go for first. And again, I think it's just that classic black and gold yeah. of the Black Legion. Um, I'm impressed with the, the chaos stuff. I love that Venom crawler, especially now I've seen the picture of it built yeah. up in, in there. Um, I think that looks amazing. Um, but overall, I think, yeah, I think it's a great starter set from yeah. Workshop. And, and they've, done, they've, they've done another one. They've pulled it out of the bag um, and they've delivered something that that is good and that is, is exciting. And people are, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, love for this set. Um, yeah, well, well done, you lot. Well done. But yeah, bravo um, workshop. Yeah, bravo. Yeah, so I guess all really is to do is for us to kind of give our last impressions on it before you take it away, build it up, and then you know we we get to see it built up. Um, mm. I mean, yeah, as someone who's not been involved in forty k too much over the last few years, I'll say this is 
this looks like another quality step in the 40k box sets yeah um and i said i'll admit like 20 minutes ago since we first started looking at these models and all that there was part of me thought oh i might i might actually pick up a copy of this <laughs> <laughs> but i'm gonna rein myself in so i'll give it a thumbs up yeah. because it, it almost convinced me to go out and buy this um but i probably won't again but that's because i've got far too much stuff on my build shelf at the moment already um but yeah if you're getting into 40k if you're into 40k and you either fancy a different army you fancy space marines or chaos and you don't do this mm. or if you do space marines or chaos i think this is going to be a perfect addition just to pick this up and, and yeah, get absolutely. those yeah. those troops to bulk out your force yeah it's it's for me it you know i saw all the announcements i saw it was coming uh I did think long and hard about it because I haven't played as much 40k recently as, as perhaps I could have done. But yeah, I, I couldn't not, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I saw it and I was just like, no, nah, I've, I've got to own some of them uh, because the joy of painting some of them is going to far outweigh the joy of never painting them. So, so that was my thinking. So yeah, thank you, Games Workshop. You've pulled another cracker. As I've said before, the minis are lovely, the fluff is cracking. The artwork is great, and there's even some nice bases. Yeah, nice bag of bases, and for the suppressors, <laughs> it's it's a nice take on the flying base. But yeah, it is. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's good. We like it. So I guess the next steps are: if you've got this, what do you think of it? Have you unboxed it? Um, do you like tell it? Us. Tell us below. Comment below. Um, if you don't tell us down there tell us on our social media which we will put up at the bottom of the screen there now so if you look down the bottom you can see our facebook twitter and instagram what we'll do is we'll make sure that when ben is assembling and painting some of these things we'll add some stuff onto instagram uh twitter and maybe the into the facebook the average tabletop gamers support group that we've got going yeah we'll put some pics up there so you can see some work in progress stuff of us building and painting these stuff yeah um and then when it's finished we'll i'll actually we'll drag you and the rest of the lads around and we'll play it and we'll get one through one of these scenarios in the shadows be a book and then we'll tell you what we actually think of the content of the book and it'll give a bunch of old 40k players who haven't played the new edition yep. and we'll get a really honest opinion from them about what they think about 8th ed so until uh we return for our next video make sure you like share and subscribe this and hit the notify bell so that you're aware of every time we post a video here to youtube on the average tabletop gamers hit up our facebook twitter and instagram and tell your friends about the hobby tell your friends about the video tell your friends about shadow spear because we're going to be telling everybody thanks for joining us and uh enjoy yep see you later see you later bye